stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, I'll call this June 5th. Uh, morning, Commissioner, in the order we've got the auditor, all three commissioners, the <coughs> county attorney president. Uh, first on the agenda, we have a uh, public hearing to vacate a portion of Catbird Drive. Uh, we need to table that to our evening meeting. If that's um, or we had a the attorney has some clarifications, I guess, that we need to deal with. So I'm not too sure what all that is, so we'll, we'll wait till our evening meeting to do that. Uh, that'll be the third Monday evening meeting, so. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's come to us right before the meeting, so. I just want to make sure we have their contacts, so they're not ready on that meeting, or contact yeah. before they come to the meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we'll get that. If something happens, we'll get a link for the meeting. We'll try to make sure we're ready. Okay. Um, so then we have uh, department updates. Um, John, do you want to do the uh, we got the bid the opening. opening first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, let's do the bid opening for the uh, community crossings. Some of the right here.
375 West, 718,504.70. County Road 450 North from Mold 31, US 31 to US 31, 129,617 dollars. County Road 700 North from County Road 250 East to Old US 31, 312,816 dollars 80 cents. Total of bid 1 million 160,000 938 dollars 50 cents. County Road 450 North from US 31 to County Road 375 West, $773,756.95. County Road 450 North from Old US 31 to US 31, $128,223.50. County Road 700 North from County Road 250 East to Old US 31, $332,680.30. Total of the bid, $1,234,000, or $1,234,660.50. Under Brown was the cheapest, correct? I couldn't tell you. I just yes. read them and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one million thirty six thousand. Are you guys looking them over and we yeah, have them at the end? Yeah. Okay. All right. We could have some time to look them over yeah. and we'll address it at the end of the meeting. All right. Okay. And then I could come back and give my yep. department report then. Yep. All right. Well, good. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, gentlemen. Coming in, we appreciate it. Okay.
department update. So Travis, I'm the sheriff. Why, Travis? Uh, morning. I don't have a whole lot. Um, we did our uh, staff lunch and employee appreciation a couple weeks ago. A sincere thank you to all of you guys that showed up and participated in that. Um, Pie in the Face was a huge success. We, we donated almost $300 to Shop on the Cop and that was staff donations. Um, so it really was a neat turnout. So um, thank you. <clears throat> Jail population this morning was at 61. Um, Jared Parrish, he's our uh, latest hire for deputy. He start, starts week six at the academy this morning. Scheduled to graduate in August. Gerald Salientes was approved by the Merit Board for hiring during the May 19th meeting. Um, lived in Rochester with his wife and children. He's been a reserve with us since 2020-ish. Um, he will start June 10th to replace Skeeter, who retired last week. Um, the Marshal Service came in last week, did their policy review and facility tour, I guess. Um, no issues with anything like that. So. We did contract negotiations last week, and they're just sending it up. They, everything should be done and, and buttoned up, hopefully, within the next week or so. Um, we've offered up 250 beds. It's unlikely they'll need that many, but they couldn't say for certain how many they'll need. So, um, Jody Miller, I know that Brian, you were in last week um, with Jody. She still has the issues at home that uh, would require, I'm asking for an extension on the 90 uh, day remote work. Um, She's able to come in quite a bit more than what she has been, but um, you know it's still kind of intermittent as far as you know, good days and bad days. So um, it's been working out well. She's putting in, you know, she, she's getting everything done that needs to be done. But, so, but we are at that 90 day period. So I'm asking for an additional 90 day extension on the report for her. I talked to her the other day too. Okay, so we appreciate that. She said she's, she's really appreciate it. it. She's out there doing stuff. Yeah. And, and she's been coming in. I mean, she's had, had the ability to come in a lot more than what she was there for a while, but there's still, you know, it'd be circumstances where she would just have to take a sick day if, if we can't let her work remotely. And, and she's still able to get stuff done that we can get done. So, yeah. I know some circumstances, I don't see any problem. Yeah. So, what she's getting done. Yes. Yeah, I think the motion to the 90-day extension for Jody. Uh, uh, sure. Make motion. Second. All favor. Motion carries through. Yeah, that's all I've got. Right. Any questions for me? Okay. Thank you, Travis. Thanks, Travis. Uh, Chad, Calvert, Vegas, jail. Um, the old jail, David Jackson is planning on putting fence up around jail this week um, and hopefully starting another week or two weeks after that. The problem we're running into is the tower. He was not planning on taking the tower down. So Travis reached out to a contact and we found a person that will take the tower down. He said it'd probably be two to three weeks before he could get to it, depending on the crane service. And he threw out a price of 8600 to 10000 So he would take down the tower and then keep it? Is that, is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. That's what he... Yeah. Is that what we had in there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do we need to get, or do I need to get approval for that to tell him to... Yeah, did you hear Holly? And make sure he has insurance and everything. Yeah, other than that, he's yeah. Good to go as soon as he can get it down. And we we're leaving the power on to the jail until he can get it, get the get the tower down. We yeah, because Duke Energy came last week, and David Jackson and Duke and I decided that it would be better off to leave the power on. Duke said when it's time to to cut the power, they can come to a short notice. And, can I add on that? Sure can. The day he tears that down, I need to be notified because I have to contact FCC and FAA. Okay. Um, 
we have a licensing co company that's taking care of the background stuff as well. Okay. So when that's so on the ground, you to need to call that. Gail and tell her it's there. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, the probation remodel looks like it's pretty much complete, other than a few odds and ends that need to be hung back on the wall. Um, the annex roof, I, I'm going to say they're going to have another day or two. I was just out there this morning, and it's like this section that isn't done yet. So, and then they're going to go from here straight over to the probation building. Um, and I talked to Mike, and his last day will be Friday. He said, well, it may be before that considering we aren't getting any rain and the grass isn't growing and all that kind of good stuff. So, <laughs> but that's all I have. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie, did you have anything for us? Carrie, for the maintenance director? Um, I guess the only thing that's uh, nice to meet everyone. Uh, the only thing I have is I got an uh, estimate in on the tree on the corner that's dead. Okay. And I didn't know if you want me to submit that to you guys. And yeah. Sure. The cost of the removal of the tree is twelve hundred dollars. Uh, stump removal for the tree is three fifty. Uh, somebody mentioned to me that possibly the two pine trees that are actually dying, the tall ones, they have the lights on them. I did get an appraisal on them just just in case an estimate or whatever on them and that's twelve fifty and then three fifty to remove the stumps. And twelve fifty a piece or for both of them? Twelve fifty for both of them. Okay. And then uh, the locust tree that's near the courthouse getting it trimmed up was two fifty. Okay. Um, you probably don't remember anything about the bringing tree back in pines back in for that. I don't remember. Okay. Well, I Carrie, is that a quote that they have there? This is an estimate from Hilltop Kennel, or Hilltop, I can't look at Hilltop. Does he have an actual quote for us to sign or approve it or that? No, he just, it's just an estimate he gave me, copy of an estimate. I mean, I think, is that, well, the tree in the corner definitely mm -hmm. needs to. And we need to get that long one, I think. Yeah. Uh, and they can take everything, the bulk of everything from the sidewalk area, right? Not getting he said that he would try his best to make sure he stays on the parking spot out front yeah. to the west, I would believe. He doesn't want to get up on the sidewalk because he says that he knows that, that his yeah. truck's pretty heavy for that. Okay. Just so we know. Um, Damage. Yeah, because that's almost pine trees. You want to do those? First I mean, we, we talked with Hank Josh had an estimate a couple of years ago about bringing some trees in to replace them. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where, where, where that was. I'll have to ask him to get an update on that. So. Do you want to just do the one tree for right now and then we'll, we'll, we'll get some more information on the pine trees? Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll still maybe be interested on the pine trees that's good. So the tree and the stump removal of just the main tree that's dead. And then did you want the locust tree trimmed up yeah. by the courthouse also yeah, while he's here? It's getting get pretty close to the courthouse there, yeah. so we yeah. can trim that up. So. And then on the side on that, the, I was mentioned, Mike told me that new lighting had been put on the pine trees uh, for lighting up in the winter time or Christmas time or whatever. And the squirrels have made pretty much half of that already. I, I got a whole box uh, over there of chunks, lights, and bulbs. So, I don't know if those will even work now anyways. Yeah. yeah, we may have to do something just to work Christmas this yeah. year on one of those pine trees, so. Yeah, we'll, we'll visit that. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Um, I have one more question. I know I talked to you Friday. The grass is getting pretty dry at the courthouse. Do we want him to start watering that, or you got the ability to water that? Or I talked to Mike a little bit about this morning. He said that it's it, it's tough to do it, but it, it, it can kind of be done, he said. That's how he put it to me. So I would just have to dig in to see if I can get enough hoses and sprinklers and try to keep it green. Is that what you guys want to but do? I think we probably do. We don't want to let it burn up, right? Or, or what's yeah. your thinking? Yeah. We've never watered it yeah. before? Yeah. He, he, said, since I've been he said he only did it one time, and that's when dirt was brought in, and he was trying to get fresh grass. So maybe we don't. I don't know. I'm just, just my suggestion. Maybe just leave it. Grass will be dormant, and then we'll start showing the green back up again. It just yeah. looks kind of dead for a while. 
I don't, I don't, from my knowledge, I don't think we've ever wanted to have okay. it. He, he said no in his time, just the once when it was trying to get grass grown. So, it would be a job. So. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Terry, thank you. Thank you. D do you want that? I know you mentioned to me the log out of that tree. Yeah. You do want that? Well, I just thought we could maybe make something here for the county. Okay. Uh, he did say he would save that. Okay. And I'm not sure. What kind of tree is it, did he say? Um, I don't know if he wrote it down or not. And he said it was a locust. Yeah. Well, I'll talk to you before. You know. When's he going to do that, do you know? I didn't give him a time because I wanted to talk to you guys first. I'll talk to you about it and see if we can work with him. So, okay. And I know John has a tree. He's going to be wanting to take it down. So if you get with him sometime. Yeah. And then she had some. Um, there's, there's a couple out at the cemetery that have been brought to my attention that probably should come down sooner rather than later. Okay. So they're fine. Nothing okay. too tall or major, but. Okay. Well, it's probably done. Carry and get us a quote. quote. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of that while they're doing this. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Brian, could you introduce him again? I don't know this gentleman. This is Carrie Fear, our new maintenance director. Hello. Hello. He's Welcome. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to get right to the corner. Jerry. Corner. 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 You got it. Corner. <laughs> the time to ask. Good morning, everybody. My report this time will be very brief. We had a very busy month. Last month, uh, we actually had 13 families that we served, and that's unfortunately our busiest uh, month since I've been coroner. So, um, so far this year, we've had 19 men that have passed, uh, 13 ladies, and that's our total for the year is 32. Um, I wanted to let you know that we're hoping to go to the educational seminar in a couple of weeks. We're looking forward to that. Uh, there's some cutting edge uh, information that they're going to be uh, reviewing and going over. We're going to have the uh, gentleman for the first 48 hours. Uh, he'll be there doing a presentation and it's something we look forward to and I'll have a report on that after our return. So we got that going on. Um, also, I, I'm going to be bringing to the next meeting information on a scale. That's one thing we have uh, lacking in our forensic center and uh, that would be for weights and that would be a critical thing that we need to have um, if we began to do autopsies there. It's something that can be attached to our lift um, but I didn't get it at the time we got the lift because I was trying to keep the cost down and keep within the budget that we had and I was able to get that down and I was real proud because I mean I really had to work with them to get the price for what we got it for in the first place, but um, we're ready now to, I mean, we've been ready, but I've just been kind of waiting to do that. So I'll tell you more about it at the next meeting and I'll look forward to hearing what you have to say. Okay. So I just want everybody to be safe and that's all I have, unless somebody has any questions. Have yes. Have we had an autopsy out of that building yet? We have not, no. Our autopsies right now are performed over in Fort Wayne. And that's for many different reasons. We uh, have a pathologist there that's very good on the stand. Occasionally we need to have someone like him because instead of me, they usually have the pathologist come and he's very uh, astute. And I mean, he's probably pinnacle in the state of Indiana, the very best, serving three states because they come over from Ohio, Michigan, and then Indiana. If we had, if we were doing autopsies in house, would we need to bring somebody in to do that, or is that? Yes, and yeah, it would have to be a special board certified forensic pathologist. Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. Anything else for Jerry? No, I think I'm good. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. Okay, I, uh, Kathy, did you have anything? Yes, right. Treasure. much um, <coughs> the lease for our pretty bows postage machine back there in the corner is coming due at the end of the month um, the lease is going to stay the same that we're currently paying which is 614 per quarter 
Um, the only thing is that machine now is out of date with the U.S. Postal Service, so they will be bringing in a new machine at no additional cost to replace that one. So I just need your approval to go ahead and sign the lease and move forward. Any questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. I need to approve the new lease for the Pitney Towers. Bose. Bose. Bose's machine. Second. All in favor? Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Tax collection went well, so yeah. we're moving forward with tax sale stuff. Very good. 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 Okay. Yep. Uh, Gail, Byron, one EMA. Morning. Um, a couple of things. Uh, you have the addendum to Barry's contract. He's adding a few more days to the EMS contract in reference to the community outreach. Um, we still need to do one over in Akron, one over in the Grass Creek, Kiwana area, and then also uh, with the schools. So currently he's in contact with schools, feel like it's a, a good meeting in the summer. Um, they're not busy. So they can accomplish and talk about that in a smaller yeah, so meeting. If I understood that right, the price stays the same, we're just extending the yeah, time period to have it done. Yeah, we're just extending that time because I believe, was that July 1st or whatever, yeah. and um, we should have that all accomplished by August. So we'll reach out to those two areas once um, you guys approve that, and then we're gonna move forward to scheduling those. Okay. okay. So I have here the addendum number one, um, router services to uh, extend the uh, time frame by 60 days. So, uh, motion to so move. Second. All favor? Motion carries 3-0. So the next thing on the list is um, on the EMA side, last Friday I attended the tier two training, which is part of the LEPC um, and keeping ourselves compliant here for Fulton County. Uh, those plans are being updated um, on the convenience for the fire and first responders that can log into that tier two and respond in, responding to hazard uh, chemicals. So all I need to do is go in there and attach a map that is now um, been attached to the tier two groups and um, all your fire departments have been sent a login to get into that tier two group um, so they can manage and respond to those uh, like series uh, solutions and uh, maybe Rochester Metals or whoever that is on that tier two group. So that is being um, accomplished. Um, the tabletop exercise, that plan was submitted in reference to in hybrids. I did talk to Ryan in reference to holding that um, tabletop exercise. Uh, for the county, we had an extraordinary um, outcome. We had 45 people, 45, 47 people at our last tabletop. Um, it's one of the best in the northern Indiana, I will say that, last December. We got recognized for that. Um, so we'll, we'll be in the beginning stages of planning that, and there is a planning committee that Jerry and her group has assigned to do that, and I'll assist them to the proper chemical. And uh, we will fill out the HEMP grant. Um, looking at some things, I know what we missed on the last that we needed to clean up, so hopefully we get that and uh, can bring more tools and resources to the table for that. Um, as well as the volunteer, uh, the CERT program, you may have seen that advertised on social media or wherever. Uh, Craig is leading that up. They are in the midst of their training. They are now gonna start doing their skills. And we have put a deadline on that for August the 18th. And then after we have those group of volunteers, we will start another CERT program. But we had a great, uh, reaction from the community to be volunteers in a certain program. So that is going well. Uh, the fence is completed also on the towels before I forget to tell you that. Uh, we will have um, 
shovelers come in and ground that and then we'll get a lock on that Gary or Chad it's Chad Alex <laughs> jail um, to make sure we can get in and out of that gate but you know, we'll need to lock that as well um, and last but not least is the EMPG grant which is our re uh, salary reimbursement so that has started the first qualifications have been sent in by the deadline which was made uh, 31st so and the second part is after that's approved um, is due on the 15th and that's up to 50 percent of our re our salaries so what Craig is being paid and myself so next uh, meeting you should have an appropriation uh, for approximately 13,000 uh, to add to Craig's salary that I'll take away for that in reference to kind of following what he usually or a part-time person worked. Um, we're just being called out and that um, EMA is actually functioning more in the public. So um, he does get called out quite a bit for response um, on the days he is not working. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to look into that with the next budget because he does have a business because he is only part time. Mm -hmm. So calling him out like that, we kind of need a policy in place and uh, restriction and payment for that. I feel like calling you guys out in the middle of what you're doing and, mm -hmm. and so forth. So that's either going to be him or Marcel and go from there. Mm -hmm. So Dave will work on that with mm -hmm. Dustin Drake and, and so forth and then bring it back to the table for an extra budget. But other than that, yeah, but other than that, I don't think I have anything else in our department. We're just cleaning up those final uh, appropriations and uh, in the construction of the jail. And then uh, you were included on an email that I sent down to the state. Their board meeting is on the 13th. I don't know if they're going to have something before or on that date to attend. Um, either or, um, I'm prepared as long as it's a date good nice atmosphere and it's productive and there's something that's going to be done on the table so you think um, it will be the 13th and then possibly i'm not for sure there. unless they want to set something aside in an executive standpoint they speak to their attorneys before they do that when they have uh, national companies and stakeholders that have contracts so this is the after action report yes for our yes and then i know we've uh, contacted baker and tilly and then some things but two things that are very important about getting some of our money back would be the uh, project management that Todd did not fulfill we we all know that mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, container out there that's rusted and yes. stuff and um, those two things I definitely know I feel that we have a leg to stand on um, and we need to keep moving forward with that I feel He is the guru with the DLGF uh, as far as abatements go. So I'm requesting uh, to see if I could have an abatement class held in this room uh, Tuesday, August 1st. It would be open to, uh, by invitation, to the community as, as an educational tool. Uh, it offers three hours of continuing education credits for those that need it. Uh, I'm kind of excited about it. I feel with the new mayor coming in, uh, some new council members for city uh, and here, as well as uh, Rebecca Hartzler out there in Akron, uh, he would be willing to teach real and personal abatement, the, the class, and we would also open it to FEDCO. Uh, I, some attorneys, I think Warren Adley, I could be wrong, but I believe Warren Adley is gonna start doing abatements for Peterson and Wagner. I think it's a nice opportunity for the county to extend an olive branch, if you will, into the city government. Uh, it's totally free for us to do this. We'd be hosting it through Steve McKinney and, and materials and everything is, is provided. So um, 
I'm, I'm asking, I guess, permission to do that Tuesday, August 1st from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, it's a great idea. Yeah. 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 Well, I awesome. appreciate you. I appreciate everything you're doing. I mean, with the clock, you know, the evening meetings for the public and stuff. I, That's going well, by the way. So <laughs> another other doing attendance. Yeah, uh, I'm actually going to come to your July meeting and give you an update once my once my stuff's done. Uh, I did have a little snafu um, as far as uh, just connection and things like that at Grass Creek, so I may adjust for next year if I you know, when I do it again. But uh, if, if you're good, I'm going to go to the next council meeting and ask for their permission as well to make sure. And you guys are going to be invited to this as well as, you know, I guess, of the, the county council. So uh, my second request on this is I'm going to ask if we can possibly close my office for that three hours. I don't take that ask lightly. Uh, but I figure if I can get 30 days advance notice to the title companies, um, the only time this class is offered to my group is if they go to conference. So if I can close the office for three hours so they can attend this, one, for the educational purpose, but two, it will save money. Uh, because for them to go to conference, it's a per diem thing, then there's mileage. and So really, it's, it's more of a benefit if they can attend and we can just shut down for three hours. So. Um, Sounds like a good idea, really. All right. Well, I appreciate it, and I'll, I'll be asking the, the council next. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have a public hearing on the Yoder Estate. Is there anybody here for this? Uh, I would like to table it till the next meeting in June because Lauren was not able to be here and I'd like her to be here at that time. So we'll table this to our evening meeting? Yes. Okay. All right. So then we have uh, the Woodlawn Hospital Board Trustee appointment. Um, Terry Johnson, who's up for reappointment. Um, so I can make a motion to uh, reappoint Terry Johnson to the uh, Little Hospital Board of Trustees. So move that so So move it. I'll second. Is that all in favor? Motion carries three out. Okay, and then we have um, an appointment to the uh, Fulton County Library. Um, and Brian Walsh for placing them to her. Um, any questions? Um, Walsh. And retain a motion to approve Ryan Walsh, uh, the new board member of uh, the County Public Library. So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three out. Okay. Okay. And then we have uh, a travel request. Do you guys have a chance to look at those? Are they all right with those? I didn't see them. Very issues. Okay. We have. Uh, Health Department uh, on those two, so I entertain a motion to approve the travel authorizations presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three on. Signed. One signature and sign us later. Okay, we have the resolution for the wellness program. Okay, this is a program that I said went around and checked with all the department heads. Uh, we discussed at a couple meetings took it to the council at their last meeting. They approved it. Uh, it now goes out. This will be starting here now uh, to attend. They have to show up for minimum of eight times a month. The county will cover the cost of $37 of their attendance. If they fail to show up for the eight, that will be a voluntary payroll deduction. And at the last count, we had 13 signed up. And uh, I think it's a pretty good thing. Yeah. Right. Any other questions from anybody on that? Okay, we have resolution 06052023. It's a resolution to establish a wellness exercise program. Whereas, Fulton County Board of Commissioners wish to establish a wellness exercise program 
for employees and whereas Fulton County Council voted in favor of funding the wellness exercise program. Now, now therefore be it resolved that the Fulton County Board of Commissioners will offer the wellness exercise programs to employees who meet the following criteria. All full-time employees who carry health insurance through the county. If the employee attends the wellness center a minimum of eight times per month, the county will cover the cost of the program. If the minimum requirement is not met, the employee will pay that month's cost through a voluntary payroll deduction. Any of the county's contributions for the cost of the program will be a taxable <coughs> fringe benefit. If the employee serves uh, employment with the Fulton County government, severs uh, employment with the Fulton County government, the remainder of the employee's contract for the wellness exercise program will be between the contract of parties the employee and the wellness center to fulfill the terms agreed upon. So um, I entertain a motion to approve resolution 05062023. So moved. Second. There are any questions? All in favor? Motion carries 3-0. Okay. Dave, I want to thank you for the effort you put into that. So. Yep. Okay, we have uh, the minutes. <coughs> Yeah, I can believe we've had that much stuff in the last uh, executive session on April 4th. We have uh, Monday, April 10th, and uh, Monday, May 15th, uh, and the May 16th executive session minutes. And I wish to approve all those minutes listed. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. 3 0. Had a chance to look over the claims. Is there any questions or concerns? We've got the uh, main credit card statement $7,432.11. And <coughs> we've got the miscellaneous claims. Mm -hmm. June 5th, $1,339,340.70. We've got uh, a lot of you know the miscellaneous claims. It's uh, highway department. It's, it's all kinds of various stuff. It's not just miscellaneous. So it's, there's a lot, a lot to that. We have payroll for six, or, uh, 52623 at $271,050.21. With the payroll deduction amount of one hundred seventeen thousand dollars, one hundred seventeen seven hundred seventy-two dollars and thirty-one cents. We have uh, utilities eighteen thousand two hundred twenty dollars and thirty-six cents. Payment for the ditches ten thousand seven hundred and twenty three dollars and seventy five cents. We have uh, election pay uh, two thousand twenty dollars. We have uh, fines and fees. $1,945.54. The wheel surtax for May of 2020. 
Treasury of $62,432.65. Uh, the Treasury Fulton County transfer from the GDI uh, to the Redemption Fund, $10,723.75. So that drain we just that's the real rat signal. You know, the insurance claim docket provide four to five ten twenty-three for thirty-seven thousand five hundred and thirteen dollars and seventy-eight cents. Payroll for 6-2 of 23, $265,321.76 with the deductions, Services four thousand dollars. The health department uh, for COVID testing and vac vaccinations uh, is four thousand three hundred uh, four thousand three hundred fifteen dollars. And it's appropriate money for. The help operate the immunization point. Yeah, we got the highway department, Hume Bridge. Bridge 32 was $298,001. Bridge 50 is $229,771. We're the amount of $527,772. The highway department, uh, MBH, first. I don't get it, but no. Okay, from the uh, 1176 MBH, first uh, 32, 298, $1, first 50, 229, 772. It's reducing the 1176 MBH budget in order to appropriate the balance for the 1135 King Bridge. I don't get what they're doing. Christina, did you get my email on Friday? I haven't gotten through my email on Friday yet, no. Okay. On Friday, I sent you an email requesting you to go back to the original appropriation that I talk to you about prior to the one we changed on Wednesday. So you don't want these approved? No. I didn't think you did. Come down and we'll have a conversation after the meeting. Okay. Take that back if you will. Okay. We have communications. <coughs> The uh, statewide nine one one forty three thousand three hundred sixty seven dollars and twelve cents. Uh, have two invoices remaining for the jail construction of the tower. Uh, we have EMA um, County General fourteen thousand. $290. It's uh, crazy working 23 to 20 hours a week. We're taking the director. We didn't know the true demand of both positions. Uh, so both of them, the director and the deputy salaries are up 50%. So 
Mine is not. It's just Craig's. It's just Craig's? It's just Craig's. Mine's the salary portion and it's his hourly. Um, okay, I don't want to put the hand up. No, go ahead. Don't I'll go. give back to John here. Then, so go ahead. Um, I thought we were supposed to have a transfer for you, so you had some money. Okay. Carries it. What, didn't we talk about that? You don't remember it? Maybe it's just me and Christina Haas. She had to pay you. She had to transfer money to pay you. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> they do too. All right. Why well, don't you check on it? I guess there ain't nothing we can do about that. Well, yeah, because it had to do with the uh, proof and everything else. Mm -hmm. Christina and I are working on that today. Okay. So it's going to be okay to pay him the next time, though? Is that going to. Well, we're going to have to appropriate money. Well, yeah. Whatever. We'll talk about it later. Okay. John. Was there an appropriation in there for the power room? I didn't hear. No. It was supposed to be for $70,200. Yep. So they have the additional or the appropriation from the highway uh, MBH for uh, $70,200. It's appropriation funds to cover the purchase of the power room. I just pull all your stuff, John. Sorry. <laughs> I wanted that one. Before. Pull it. You did want that one. He did want this. Go ahead. You was going to say something, right? Well, I just want to get back to John on his uh, on the. Uh, Are you ready for the? Yep. Okay. Oh. Ready for you. Did you have a chance to look over? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Katie and I looked over at all this, uh, the quantities and everything was good. Holly yeah. gives her a blessing. So uh, we're looking for a, a motion to accept these bids. Uh, okay, so we, in, which uh, one? Fendon Brown? Yes, the Fendon Brown, and it came in $172,394.50 under budget or under es engineer's estimate. Okay. So, so it's a total of $1,160,938.50. Okay. I'll make that motion. A second. All in favor? Motion carries three up. All right. Got some very competitive bids today. Good. Yeah. Yeah. All of them were under, under uh, estimates. So. Uh, I've got uh, three permit requests. Uh, present to you this morning. Uh, the first one is permit number uh, 2317 from Kendall Martin. Uh, he's requesting a driveway permit at 1398 East, 450 North uh, Rochester. And this driveway is for an egg barn uh, one half mile east of old US 31. Uh, he's re going to require a six inch culvert at that address, 450 North. Questions on Mr. Martin's? You're okay with everything you looked yeah. at? It? Yeah, John Flint went out and looked at it. So okay. we, I'll make a motion to approve that permit. Yeah. Order. A second. All in favor? Motion carries. Next one's permit request 2318 from High Deal Construction. Uh, they're requesting a permit for 150 foot driveway on lot number four at the intersection of West Side Drive or West Side Road and Wabash Avenue. Uh, again, John Flint went out and looked at this one, said everything was all right. It doesn't need a driveway culvert. Okay, motion to approve permit 2318. I will make that motion. Second. All in favor? Motion carries through. And the last one I have is permit request 2319 from Kurt Ingram. He's request a permit to bore a six inch pipe. Uh, about six feet under the road at 208 East 550 North Rochester. 
uh, approximately 50 to 70 feet east of the house that's at the property. Uh, this is for drainage. <coughs> and I don't see anything wrong with this one either. Make motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Motion carries through. Yeah. Update on the guys that they been patching holes, changing culverts. Um, they got a couple of great big culverts changed out here on 650 East in preparation for the community crossing roads. Those were some big projects they got done. And they did good on those. Um, they got the calcium chloride out on the gravel roads and all the intersections in front of the houses this past couple of weeks. Um, they saw the gravel or roads that they went to chip seal. Um, we started mowing. They've been mowing, uh, I think they're probably halfway through a round, first time around, so we're doing good on that. Uh, we did get the brush cutter, the new brush cutter delivered. They have training on it. Uh, we're planning on putting it in service tomorrow, so that, uh, nice unit. Yeah. So, um, did uh, send you a copy of the local uh, roads and bridges matching uh, road agreement. Uh, you had a chance to look that over. I just basically need your blessing on that so I can let Brian sign that for you. And uh, it's just so we can receive the community crossing to match money uh, for the grant that we just did it out today. Mm -hmm. And I'll share so I can get a, a motion approval from me on that today. Okay. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three out. Okay. Um, I want to bring you up to date on bridges 32 and 50. Uh, of course, Rick and Brian, they went with me on the final bridge inspection for 32. That went well. The bridge looked great. There was a couple minor things. I think they had a sign marker on one end that they could put in some lap on the, out in the right of way. Um, that was I was pretty impressed with the job they done on that. Uh, Bridge 50, it was supposed to start today. Uh, AT&T, I know your favorite phone company. <laughs> <laughs> they realized there, last minute, they had a fiber line connected to the bridge that they need to move. Do you still, know it's still waiting? Was still waiting. Was that, that, that wasn't them out there doing that? That, the other that was RTC. Okay. And yeah. from what I, the way I understood it, Katie, correct me if I'm wrong, a RTC board two lines or I'll have to check with you Justin I don't um, know I, I have the most up to date I talked to him Friday okay uh, the way I understood it RTC board two lines put theirs in they have a route for AT&T to put theirs in AT&T is waiting for a contractor to come in and put theirs in but it could be some time before they do get it done uh, we should know more this week, but it could take some time for them to get out there and do theirs. And the kicker is the penalty to that for pushing us back is we're going to have to operate it now. I don't know that answer. That's what I thought the was. It's very possible. So at and you know, we've got the, we got the board, all that to just unhook, run the line, hook it back up. There's making sense. Well, you, at &T. It's a fact they said originally they didn't have anything on the bridge. Signed off. Yeah, it's signed off. off. It's signed off. Yeah. And it's and it's the eleventh hour, they realized that they did. <laughs> we should know more this week. Got eleven. So make it noted that at and is a hold up, not, not the county or the state. Yeah, <laughs> but it's really going to mess up the state. Right. So. Um, that was supposed to be done for the harvest season for the truck traffic and it wasn't well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they can't even guarantee that will be done before harvest. Mm -hmm. so, um, <coughs> I, I heard that this morning there was some activity out there. For well, that's what, that's what so I think. I've seen a different company. That's it could actually be them out there taking care of our day. Right. So that's what there, there is hope. I just texted Justin, so I'll see if he has more recent update from Brian, yeah. you guys know. Yeah. It is I, I wish I had good news today, but I, I don't. Um, 
Bridge 33, uh, we did get three LOIs on that, letters of interest. We had an RFP out for that federal aid. Um, we need to figure out who, who and what's the, how we're going to score that. Uh, in the past, it's always been the assistant superintendent, superintendent, one commissioner. If you want to follow that rule of thumb, that's great. Sounds good to me. If all three of you commissioners want to score, that'd be fine with me. I told my time. I seen it coming too, Dave. <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> However you want to do it, uh, that's, just let me know and we'll get that process. Dave, started. well, I do. I mean, you got a time for him to learn what the process is about. Sure. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll get you when you get back from your trip. We'll we'll get started on that. Okay. So, um, while Katie's here, I'll let her give you a little update on the sidewalks <laughs> for 114. More good news. More good news. Right. Right. So, and Maggie's going to be here later today too, so I can see if she has any more up to date information. We had a really positive meeting with not when was that? I mean, it's been a couple months now. Yeah, I thought they originally signed off. Of they basically. seemed very supportive of the project, and then when we submitted the permits, they kind of came back and were like, actually, we know you said this is a sidewalk, but we kind of feel like it's a trail, and there's some setback requirements, and we're concerned about drainage. So Maggie is the most detail-oriented person I've ever met in my entire life. She has a lot of records of all these previous conversations. The person that we originally met with, I'm blanking on his name now, but was not part of that permit process review. So she's pushing back as hard as she can to kind of pull, try to pull him back into the conversations. Um, so we're still working through that. They were less receptive, which was very surprising. Um, I'm confident in that. He's confident in our abilities to <coughs> keep working forward, but that has been a slight hiccup. We were not expecting them to kind of switch their tune completely. So I guess to be determined. Now it's supposed to be letting bids here on that fairly shortly, isn't it? Well, the original plan is to bid quite soon, but we have to get the permit yeah. approvals right. are kind of one of the last steps in this process. So it was an unanticipated holdup. So still working through that, Matthew's gonna come um, and later today, she should be here pretty soon. So, and we can talk through that. I can see if she has another update, but that is the latest as of last week. She has pushed back pretty hard on them and been pretty stern. So we're waiting for them to kind of review everything that she sent over. Do you know the guidelines? What is it? Anything over five foot, they can call the trail. Is it, am I correct on that or not? I, is it I or think six? it's five. It's five. Oh, sure. Um. And so, but that was one of our concerns to begin with, and so that's that's why we switched to a sidewalk. Um, but they're, they're still kind of being a little nitpicky about it, so I'm not exactly sure what that's about. Um, okay. So, the sidewalk can go up to six foot, didn't it? Yeah, we're, it was like a super sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah, so there's different, I mean, because most people would think of a multi-use path would be an eight or 10 foot at least path. And we knew that we weren't going to have enough room to do that effectively and follow all the standards. So that's why we took it down to a sidewalk. I thought that we had everybody. But I think a sidewalk's five foot too, aren't they, John, to meet ADA? And that on the sidewalk got to be five feet to meet the ADA requirement. That sounds right. Yeah, I think five foot. So, I mean, you, you, you're nitpicking whether they're calling a sidewalk or a trail as far as I'm concerned. Right. Oh, yeah, that's exactly how we're kind of perceiving it. As we're more of a sidewalk unless you know, we have a letter of support from the school saying that it is evacuation route, you know, or something like that. We can even probably get that pulled off if we need to. But yeah, we'll, we can talk about it later. Yeah, we'll keep you posted. And like I said, I mean, I'm confident in, of, <clears throat> of anybody Maggie's like record keeping and pushing back with them. But yeah, we kind of we went through the proper process. We had the proper conversations and now it's different people involved and so hopefully we can get that original guy back in the conversation and because he definitely signed off on yeah, he was our plan everything. yeah so it's frustrating i'm sorry to provide that update but we're fine we're keeping we're not your fault thanks for the update thanks. appreciate it Katie. um last thing i wanted to bring up today was uh today starts the 
highway departments 10 hour work days we start from 6 to 4 30 uh, Monday through Thursday and um, the weekend 4th of July uh, according to the personnel policy we would work from 7 to 3 30 four days that week but uh, in the past we've always worked 6 to 2 30 with the commissioner's blessing so I'm going to ask for that again today go ahead and get that scheduled so if you guys are all right with that good yeah okay so the guys like it because they're used to getting up at six and they like to go home a little early that week so just stay in the same routine keep them happy yeah <laughs> and they get a little work done while it's cooler so but uh, unless you have anything for me that's about all we got john and i will be gone wednesday and thursday for iaks uh, this week I, yes i know uh i come coming up here this morning see so that 950 closed off down here by me yeah they're fixing that drainage there mike sadler's yeah uh, there are the pumps and that they're leaking pushing water up through the road but the culprit in there okay so that it's just temporary closure how's the chip is here going i know we're looking at right field for a 950 and somebody's had like two months i have been asking them. right now i've um, kind of got everything on hold i'm working on some budget issues with christina trying to figure out how i can finance everything i was going to do the preparation so we talked with her last week and Kind of put the brakes on. Get that worked out pretty quick. Yeah. It's giving seal time now. Just I need to set back down with her here when she can carve out some time for me. So is that uh, is that getting critical? Because you know, that needs to be done here July and August. And yes. Advertising. Yes, it does. What's the uh, <clears throat> what's the advertising time? Is that two weeks prior? Two you weeks prior to to, uh, to account. Yeah, I believe so. Right, Christine. But, it has to be advertised twice. The last time, I think, one week before, and then a week before that. So you, yeah, you have to be good. You got to get it done this week. So yeah, I was going to say, is there a chance you've got time for Stan that you can sit down with him this week? And mm -hmm. actually, actually, he's about to be done today, or we're going to advertise today. Well, I was just going to say, this week we made a council could call a special meeting. I know we do it, but. <laughs> if, 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 if they miss your meeting, so that may be something you could help, maybe help out. If you, if we're too tight, so. We'll we'll do whatever needs to be done. Well, I just I mean, that's a, that's a yeah. project we can't yeah. put off till the end of July if if we miss it now. So we're going to have to get on that. Your perfect time to chip and zero is July and August. If you miss that window, you're done. Yeah. So yeah, if we can take care of that ASAP. Yeah, because I know we got there's all these roads you put the millings on, and, and I think part of that was community corrections that you did some signs aren't community process. And we need that those approved as well. Appropriate. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Get credit. Yeah, I need to get those appropriations in. Uh, John, Christina, thank you for getting work on that. Yeah, yeah so you get your job. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Anything you. else? Good job. Okay. I think I'm good. Okay. Julie, I see you sitting here patiently. You got anything? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I I was invited a few weeks ago to come up and just give an update on the chambers. Okay, good. Tell me what's going on. flyers that I've given you are for a few of our upcoming events. Um, we're doing a women in business lunch next Wednesday and that is open to any female um, working, not working, lives in Fulton County, works in Fulton County outside of the county, um, but we'll be at the Akron Community Center. It'll just be a nice um, uh, nice time for women to get together. We'll have a networking lunch and then a presentation for a um, just helping us hopefully feel encouraged about going about our days um, so that registration is open for that and then through our um, business um, promotion side we have a business after hours our new health chiropractic June 22nd that's an open house they're doing um, a lot there so we're having refreshments meeting the doctors um, raffling off some prizes and 
so we'll be there helping celebrate your new health chiropractic. Um, and then we're doing a new series later this summer. It's a direct result of small business owners and entrepreneurs asking for more um, programming and opportunities to connect um, geared specifically to them. So um, Bagels and Business is a new series we're offering um, July and August this year. It'll be just an hour um, every Friday morning where um, entrepreneurs and small business owners can come together, light breakfast, and then we'll have a program. Some of those um, programs will be about finding funds, marketing trends, um, specifically email marketing trends, um, making sure that your Google listing is up to date. So just different opportunities for people to get together, a little, learn a little bit more. Um, so all of three of those events, would you have registration open for those? Um, the and then all three events, it's open to the public. Um, you know, we, we do things to serve our members, but um, we want to make sure that we're including everybody in those. Um, a couple other things just coming up down the road. Um, the, our nonprofits in the county have been looking for um, some more educational opportunities, so we're partnering with the Northern Indiana Community Foundation um, later this year as well in doing a four series workshop, Lunch and Learn. Um, about board governance and management and then how to market your nonprofit and put together the proper reporting. Um, you know, people say, how, how successful is your nonprofit? It, sometimes it's hard to measure. Um, so we'll be doing specific function learns um, for those nonprofits through, through partnership with the Community Foundation. Um, and then just wanted to let you guys know our Chamber Dollar program um, it's going really well. We've had over $30,000 redeemed through May 31st of this year. So um, that's all money that stays local and it's been at our local businesses. So we're happy with that over $30,000. And then um, today we start creating for Fulton County Leadership Academy 23-24. So um, we're, we're looking forward to that and we'll have our next cohort registration open soon. But just wanted to give you an idea of a few of the things that we're doing at the chamber office. And, um, make sure that you're, you're in the loop of what we're doing. Okay, that was good. Thank you. Appreciate it, Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Mark, proceed. Did you have anything? Yeah, I, you asked me to look at that tree over yeah. there. Okay. So uh, that's a honey locust tree on the courthouse lawn over there. And I don't know how long, I, I can't see any reason why, <clears throat> why it's dying, but it's dead. Uh, it's got a little bit of growth left on it, but um, yeah, it's ready for removal as far as I yep. could say. But okay. uh, I can't see, all those trees around there are, are honey locust trees. And uh, big ones. So why that one demised, I don't know. That's not a tree, it normally dies. Yeah, it's, it's gone. Yeah. yeah. All right, I appreciate you stopping. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, any old business? I don't think so. Uh, no. Christine? Old business? New business? Uh, you know, to just make a note, we're still meeting with the health department. Met with them the other day on the House Bill 4. We got another meeting coming up to discuss how to get, get to where we need to be to try to sign a resolution or accepted by within about the first of July, I think we think about is that right? I think so, yeah. yeah. So it's gonna take that couple of work on that. Okay. Yeah. Still new business. New business. Okay, Jerry. Jerry's got on. Okay, Jerry. I just had a question. I don't know what all claims that you okayed for today, but We've had some claims that have been very much delayed, and I've gotten past new notices, like from our uh, pathologist. And uh, I've got other ones where we have like a young businessman in town here that performs some duties for us. That has not been paid, and uh, my deputies, none of them have been paid all year. And they're still, I mean, I'm getting ready to go next week. Um, I'm going to be under anesthetic for some uh, dental surgery for about five hours. So, of course, I'm going to rely on them to help me out. But they've been helping me out a lot this year already and have not been compensated. So I don't know if any of that was in those claims that you guys looked at today. We did not see any of those. Um, didn't, didn't see any for her people. I know I talked to Christina about that maybe a week ago. Um, she was going to get with you and work something out 
but that family ain't been done yet. So we're about ready to end the second quarter to make it a half year, and so I mean I'll be ready to submit some more things and uh, for the work and professional services performed but, by them. But if you tell us what claims you was looking for to get paid, we can we can tell you whether they're going to get paid this time or whether we need to check into why they ain't getting paid. Okay. We got a, a doctor. We'll have them all. Okay. Do you know, we got certain ones that. Yeah, I've got a couple other ones. It's up. just that I feel like it's putting a black eye for myself. I mean, people are maybe thinking I'm not attending to things that I I submit those immediately when I get them, and I know there's been a few times that we've had pay periods that I mean I was surprised like sometimes I don't know till a month later like the one at Fort Wayne that we got a new bill for an autopsy performed during the month of May and then also one from back earlier this year but it, it seems like we have a lot of problem with uh, your people every year the, they're contracted or that there's differences on you know that's contracting right or they supposed to be contracted or whatever and you know I, I'm kind of wondering if maybe we don't need to go a different route is there any different route we can pursue I mean, can the counties in the state all have a variety of ways to do it they can, can do it like as a vendor or independent contractor they can make them employees of the county they I mean so it depends on what county you're referring to but so it can really be done any way that's do you, try to a, do, it do you have a preference on how it's done? I mean, employee contracted, uh, you know, whatever. If you got you, if you got a pros con, you know. I mean, choice. I can sit in and think about that and give you a better answer uh, before the next meeting or something like that. But I, I just feel like we need to be more timely. I mean, these people are on call uh, 24 7, 365. Their hearts are in it hugely. They're passionate about this job, and um, it's very necessary for the county. They're getting ready to go do some training here um, in a couple of weeks that we need to do, that we need to stay compliant with the state of Indiana or the Indiana codes. And part of time employees do that training also, correct? Yes. You, you have to be medical death investigative um, the, the legal part all that's got to be done and you have to be certified and keep the continued education so that, i agree we need to get those people paid because when they go through the certifications or doing the work they're doing actually hazardous jobs they are i mean we do all of our own cleaning over there and they have to be aware of blood-borne pathogens osha standards and all that and there's exposures uh, on you know each person that we deal with so in addition to that then the cleaning and that uh, the continuing ad we've got like the child totality review team and all types of meetings that we go to and meet that you know you might not be aware of but right. they're exactly. important because we went through all this back in November December of last year trying to get everything straightened out and was able to get those people on paid yes have we had changes in regulations or anything that way is the reason why not that I've been told or been aware of. And I used that pretty much the same contract as we had last year. The framework was designed by Christina, and then I have areas that I can fill in. And one of the areas, I think I had three uh, star points in there, and they asked me to remove the one, so I removed it and resubmitted it back probably, I don't know, a month or six weeks ago. Sounds like we just need to get a group and sit down and figure out what we're going to do. It sounds like we need to do it pretty cool. Part of time in that. Yeah. That's every day. Yeah. Um, that's every day, all day long. Okay. Well, think about what being asked, I guess, if there's a preference contracted or. Okay. We'll try to look into I mean, and I know like two years ago, I wrote a complete job description. Um, for the deputies in the department. It was, I mean, it was quite complex. It was maybe 17 to 20 pages. And so, I mean, I feel like I try to do everything that I can to keep things moving and keep it smooth, but. Okay. Yeah. I guess I have a question because for the last three years I've signed something new every year. So my question is for Holly. Do you like any other part-time job I mean, if we're not getting paid, I mean, we're going to help Jerry. She's right, because of the passion and who we're working under, we're going to continue to do it. 
as a community thing. Not, normal people don't do this type of work, but why, why, do you have to get, why do we have to fight every time to get any kind of compensation that we've signed up for? What are you signing new over here? A, a different Just contract? Whatever, yeah. Whatever, whatever we need to do to help Jerry it's out. It's not the same contract year after year after year. I mean, we'll do whatever. We just need to know what to do and to make it easier. Who's giving you those contracts? Uh, it's handed down by Jerry. Mm -hmm. okay. And are you making new ones every year? The framework was actually originally constructed by Christina, and then there was uh, some places that I could add things that I felt were necessary or deemed okay. proper. For and they're different every year then? That no, the last two years they've been pretty much the same. But I mean, one minute I'm told that nobody can have any uh, mileage, and then I was told that now, most recently, that the chief deputy can have mileage. And I mean, so it's not just that type of thing, it's uh, and then I think I was, I remember I was told that they couldn't even go to the conference this year. So the contract is not for mileage, it does not cover continuing education is the issue with the contract with those two claims getting paid. So, so do I need to add that to the contract that yes, they will? I believe Chantal has discussed this with you. And she most not. recently State Board of Accounts has also said that there is no contractual prices in there. The contract is that they will be performing these services and there's nothing to audit the cost of what they're providing against. So when you turn in a claim for $3,000, there's no breakdown of services for me to be able to audit against. So if they're doing transports for $100, it needs to be quoted on the contract that way. I can provide that quite simply. Okay. I've never been told that, and I have not met with Chantel about any of those things either. Yeah, we, were with, we were with her one day, and she refused to talk to her. Yeah, about. Chantel, when she says, I don't know anything about it, she has to come to the last come from you, and you were in the office. So, and then after Jerry left, then Chantel came in and lays out a whole bunch of paperwork. Why she didn't give that to Jerry, I don't know, but the way she talked was through your direction that she was not allowed to give her that. It had to come from you. Do you understand why now then? <coughs> why the claim wasn't paid? No, because no one had ever told me what I needed to do with additional things. Because I was told they were merely vendors, and according to the state statute, it's a vendor. So they, they, they can they're 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 1099 employee, yes. Right. So, Holly, do we need to submit a bill to the county? Would that just clean it up? I mean, if an independent contractor sends you a bill, I mean, why are we signing contracts without any uh, knowledge of what you're getting paid? Right. right? If, if you're a vendor, then you just submit a bill like, with the breakdown. If you're if you're signing contracts, then you're an independent contractor for the county, I assume is what those contracts are, is that right? Right, and there is no breakdown. There's no breakdown for me to... And I've never been asked for a breakdown until just now. And not even by Chantel. When you and I first talked about the contracts, we talked about those issues, the mileage, and I don't break all that. Okay. Well, we'll clean it up going forward then. Okay. Basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have any, anything for the good of y'all? All right, I entertain a motion to recess. So, so second. All favor? Motion carries. All right, there you go. Oh.